Hi everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this event. I have been so excited about this all day. Um, Sarah Davison Tracy is a friend. We've partnered on several projects and she has written this Amazon bestseller. It's been on the Amazon bestseller list for the last week book, No Longer Untouchable. And I read it actually about a year ago, um, maybe a little bit more than a year ago, Sarah had asked me to read it and, and give a, you know, some, one of those pre-reviews and, but then I wanted to reread it again more closely in preparation for this event, which I've been doing over the last couple of days. And Sarah, it really is so powerful. It's, it's painful at points to read um, because the stories are, you know, very intense and you, you've been very truthful and real about them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, this is a, not a story about oppression or human trafficking or, you know, violence. This is a story about the courage and the love and the sisterhood of the body people that are featured in these stories, these women and sisters and the resilience. And it really is, you know, I, I was moved to tears many, many, many times. And I really encourage everyone to read this take your time reading it as Sarah says in, in the book, like take whatever time you need and take breaks, but I think you're really going to be uplifted. I know that not everyone will have had the chance to read the book in preparation for this event. And so, you know, I'm gonna ask some questions to allow Sarah and Hannah to be able to, um, to share the story. I'm also really excited to welcome Hannah Devisara Badi, who is um, here with us from Nepal. And she is one of the key storytellers in this book. And many of the characters whose stories are told are her sisters, uh, both biologically and her very, very dear friends. And Hannah is also a rescuer, an activist. She is running her own nonprofit. We're gonna be learning all about that. But Hannah, welcome. Sarah, welcome. It's so great to have both of you here tonight. And thank you for making time to share this story with all of us. It is an honor. And Hannah's muted. Do we wanna, can we unmute her? We can ask her to unmute her. Oh, there we go. Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And Hannah is coming to us from Kathmandu. Uh, so for those, I know there's a bunch of folks from India and a few from Nepal. So for those that don't know, it's very early in the morning for, for our friends in, in India and Nepal, about 6.30, 6.45. So way to get up early and join the call. That, that makes it all the more amazing. <laughs> It does make it amazing. It feel, really feels like a global brother and sisterhood with people here from both sides. Um, so I want to go ahead and jump right in. Um, and this question is for both of you, Sarah and Hannah. As you have shared in this book, a large percentage of body girls are trafficked to se for sexual exploitation, many in the brothels of India. Can you share one person's story and through that story, maybe explain some of the root causes that are leading so many body girls to being trafficked. Hannah, will you go first, sister? Yes. So hello, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to be here and share our story about our people also. Um, so, you know, in Nepal, uh, body people are the very low caste people and uh, uh, like we, we consider as untouchable. Um, so by the people especially live, you know, uh, West Nepal and uh, in the nearby Indian border also. So, um, you know, by the people, like, you know, if you read this book, you're gonna know the, all the history of body people also, because uh, we try to, you know, uh, explain a little bit, but not all, but you're gonna read that also. Um, the body people, you know, the, our main professional is, uh, you know, prostitution. So, uh, because, you know, body people, they, 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 they cannot work because they are not educated and also they are untouchable. And uh, so they have like a different, you know, group in a different places and only the body pe people group, they live in a different areas. So, and uh, those all areas, they consider as a like small brothel in Nepal. So, you know, I grew up in a, in a small village where, you know, my sisters were, um, you know, like uh, traffic, my friends were trafficked to India and uh, they, they, you know, also they used to, you know, sell themselves, you know, into the villages also. So their, uh, their father, they sell their daughters and, uh, you know, the brothers sell their, you know, like sisters. 
and even their own family member can sell, you know. Uh, so husband can, you know, sell his wife also. So it's very normal uh, for for all, you know, when I was in a village, as for me also, you know, I used to think that I think it's it's a normal. Uh, uh, so maybe one day when I grow up and I have to involve in this also. So that was our, you know, like um, our kind of like a dream also, you know, uh, becoming prostitute, you know, and going India and have some money and help our, you know, the parents and like the family members. So that kind of you know environment that we grow up, and um, so I I'll share like recent one that uh, you know that girls was trafficked. Uh, so last time in my visit, I went to like West Nepal again for my uh, you know work. So and then I found there was a, like a little girl. She was thirteen years old girl, and then there was a four man. They sell her into the brothel. And their parents were okay with that. Like I, I found it, and I, um, so I tried to, you know, uh, have a some like kind of um, consider. You know, I was considered about like why they sent, you know, sent to India. So I, I tried to talk to like the, her parents, and like they were so okay with that. And I said like, why, why you sell your daughter? Like she's very young, and uh, she don't even know like where she's going and what's going to happen to her so like but their parents were like you know we we don't care like we sell her because uh we we didn't have enough money when she was little girl we already get some money from from that brother owner you know so and they were like forcing us to sell her you know her into brothels so that's why we just we said like yes and now she's in india so you know and um now we're some we're trying to you know put like some kids on those those people like who sell her but the situation and that route is uh the first of all the the parents are not, not educated they don't have awareness about like you know and they don't know the pain of like how much the girls they're gonna suffer into india you know when they sold out into, into the brothels and um and also like i think because of lack of you know uh property and lack of you know food and they don't have a, even like a basic you know um a basic what's it called um expenses to fulfill their own desire so girls are a, are a property in our body community so like you know i have i think we we have mentioned in our book like when girls they're born into the like body family like they celebrate it's like a festival because they think that girls are for for like you know like a shell so um and also there is a no another option for parents like uh you know have another job or do something like uh you know or farming or like you know they can fulfill their own basis you know uh, needs so because of that also they still they are selling their daughters you know still they are selling nowadays the boys are also in a demand uh, so before, when I was in a village, like 15 years back, you know, there was a, like, a, even though I never knew that boys are, can sell, you know, sold out into the brothels. But like nowadays that we, uh, we found that boys are also trafficked uh, for like uh, labor, you know, for also, uh, you know, uh, prostitute also into India also. Uh, so, but in India, you know, there are like a, uh, thousand of body body girls who are already sold out and like uh, some of are still in a rigs so uh it's a uh, uh, i don't know how to explain this you know uh, because uh i was also you know about to sold out like my parents they got some money that you know when i i become like nine years old that i have to go you know like into brussels so um so this this is how like you know the like, even though till now like some parents are they sell their daughters because they want money because they want to live their good life but some of they sold their daughters because they don't have another options because still now in nepal like we have like a caste system you know the girls they can't get married with a high caste and the girls they can't you know work because they are not educated the girls who are educated they they can't even, you know, go and have a job, you know, like, you know, like other, uh, you know, the other uh, community girls, they, they, they do, because when they go, they, they, when they start doing jobs, they abuse, 
you know, from the different people. And it's so scary to, you know, uh, go outside. It's, even though me, you know, I know that what it looks like, you know, I know that what's the wrong and what's the right, even though I also suffer a lot and still now, you know, so I can't even imagine like the girl's life in the villages. So I think because of that, you know, the traffic still exists in our, in our villages. Okay, that was really actually explained it beautifully and kind of hit on a lot of those root causes, lack of education, the po poverty, the history of the body people, the lack of any kind of opportunity. Sarah, do you want to add to that? Do you, I know she covered a lot of it, but are there any other root causes that are illustrated through the stories? Well, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I wanted to point out, because I know especially so many people that are on this call know about this, but I want to just make sure that for those that are new, to some of what Hannah was talking about. Number one, that the body people, so that's her caste, her, her community. Um, and, and that is, she mentioned this, but in, in Nepal and in, in India, there is um, also a caste called the Dalit, which is in the hierarchy. And Hannah, jump in if I misspeak, okay? Um, but in the hierarchy of caste, the Dalits are the, the are, are called the untouchables. They are the lowest of the castes, but the, and the body, which is Hannah's last name, you will see her community, her caste is the lowest of the lowest, the lowest of the Dalits. So, so when she's talking about being untouchable, she, there's even a hierarchy in the Dalits, among the Dalits, where she, if her community feels like they are, they call themselves and are called the dust of Nepal, the, the lowest of the low. And so um, one of the things that she pointed out that I wanna illuminate that I think is really important, there's been all of these um, kind of uh, factors that have, have contributed to where the body are now, which part, one thing is when the, when the dynasty of, of Nepal, when the, the kings lost their power, until then, Hannah's community, they were, um, they're, they're, the body, they're called the musical people. They're the artists and the singers and the dancers and the ones that make poetry and make life beautiful. That's kind of in, in their blood, in their tradition. And so kings would seek after the body people and they would bring them to the, the palaces for entertainment. And so what, ha and there was some, um, some element of, expecting that the body women would be available for sex. So there was still that, even back in the kingship days, still that going on, but it wasn't exclusively that. It was also this beautiful element of, of creativity and, and creating beauty. And what happened when, when one of the other important factors culturally or, or historically is when the kings lost their power and were, it turned eventually, till now a democracy that was a slow journey but the body people lost their source of employment they the women were not able to to um do these beautiful uh perform and be employed at the at the palaces and so it kind of was a slow steady creep to say well we're, we have we've lost everything we have nothing and um that led to the the state that hannah mentioned that is so important for us to understand until this generation, when a girl is born a body girl, she the, the one source of work or employment is that of a prostitute, whether you are in so sexual exploitation, whether you are in Nepal or you're trafficked out of Nepal, that is the expectation for body women. When, when people hear, when Hannah says, my name is Hannah Badi, still today, she has stories. She told me last week how people assume that is, she is available for that. That is what she is doing for her work. And she has to set the record straight and say, no, that is not what I'm doing. That is not. And so she is truly leading as are many women and men with her to, to rewrite that narrative and to say, and to create an environment for education, for vocational training, for conversations as a people and say, this is not right. This is not the only work and possibility for our people. And let's uh, rewrite 
the future and create new dreams and create a sense of hope. So for now, now this generation, there are many body women, young women and women that are defying that, are raising their voices and saying that is not what we are going to do for our work and follow us and gather with us and let's let's um, live lives that are full of freedom and dignity and sisterhood. So I did want to mention that. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. I, you know, one thing that was really profound in the book is that this, this expectation of yeah. what the body been report, it's indoctrinated in girls from a very young age. So several yes. of the storytellers talked about being little girls and that higher caste men could just come in the window and rape them when they were tiny. So growing up with that exploitation and that sense of worthlessness and abuse makes it very easy. They're primed then, right, to be trafficked because probably many girls don't run away or don't even try to run away. As you shared in the story of Mina and some of the others, like there is just no hope of, of escape, you know, once they were trafficked. Hannah has been instrumental in rescuing um, several of her sisters and other other sisters who are not biological um, and going over to India. Hannah, can you tell us about that experience? How did you do it? Um, and I'm, I'm, that must have been very scary. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, so, you know, I'd, uh, I'll share about my, uh, my own sister first, how we rescued her. So, you know, she was sold out very early age, you know, and uh, our parents and we were, we think that she, she, she died or like, you know, something happened to her and uh, we live in a jungle, you know, until now, you know, so we, we usually, we live, live in a jungle and we thought maybe animals, you know, it her like maybe she died somewhere. We, we, ne we never knew that where she was. So we were looking for her and then, so one day, you know, when I was in Sister Sarah's house, after maybe 15 years back, you know, later than I got a phone call and like one of one of my friend who, who, you know, who were like, uh, she was also sold out into the brothel. She was my best friend and she was sold out when she was eight years old. And she told me that she saw my sister's, you know, children there. So there was a, like a five kids there. And then she found that my sister's children was there. So, and then, you know, and she said that my sister is also there. So it, she was in a um, mirrored, sorry, uh, in a like a GV road. And uh, so then it was kind of like shocking moment for me. And like, it was like, it was uh, kind of, uh, cause I was praying for a very long time. And uh, I had a, like a 40 days fasting that I wanted to know where my sister was, you know, even though, you know, and some people were saying like, some they were giving us some hints like they were saying like maybe your sister is in India in somewhere in Brussels so but because of that hope you know I always pray and my parents they used to play, pray you know and uh, so and many different people were like praying for her because I really wanted to know where she is you know even though she's in a brothels or even though she, she got married even though she died like I we wanted to know you know what happened to her and then you know and then it was it was like a very um it was kind of like a miracle you know that we found that my sister was in a brothel and then uh, i was so happy i think sister sarah can you know see she knows all, all about it because i was like i cried because i found it and then I, we back to nepal and then you know we tried to uh, found that uh, how how we can connect with my sister but like it was uh, you know um impossible to connect with her because they don't allow them to use phone you know sometimes like if girls they are like ready to you know work and if they say like okay i'm i'm okay to work so i'm not gonna run away when they make a belief to the brothel owners the pimps and they're gonna allow the girls to use phone or they can you know come like they can go like on market and like kind of but like you know my sister was there for forcefully so that's why they were not allowing her to you know uh, so use phone and anything so and then you know and then I went to India with my uncles and some team so we went to India and then uh, 
So I change because they are like in a in in those places like in a in a me raid in a like um in a GV road they have like so many my relatives all my relatives are there like my niece you know my my aunties and like many relatives and they know me and they know what I work you know and they also know that I'm like a very dangerous for them like because we do like rescue programs and like uh, some advocacy also uh, and so. And then I had a very long hair. I cut my hair and like I cut my hair like a boy's curl, you know. I make myself like a boy's, you know. I put some islands. And uh, so I went the, with the dress that I never wear, like a very short dress, because I really wanted to look like uh, some, you know, the girls who um, do, you know, the prostitution outside of uh, that, um, you know, the brothels. So I went there and I was walking on a street and then uh, you know um so oh can you hear me yes oh okay sorry so I was walking on a street and then one one sister so she called my name from like a, a, a you know the fourth floor and she she called me like Hannah sister Hannah sister and I was like so scared like uh, how she know me you know because uh, um, it was so there was a like uh, you know bodyguard. They were like walking on a street with a black dress and uh, uh, putting like red, red, you know, very long tika on. And I was like, I saw them and I know that you know they were like. And some of them were like uh, uh, the people that I know. You know, they were all the mans are who were standing in a you know in a gate because you know they are also body men. And then they can recognize me so easily. So when I was walking on the street and she called me and then I just, you know, look up and then I saw her. She was one of our sister from our, our hostel and the, their parents, they call her that they were very sick and they wanted to see her face because they, they said like, I'm her mom called a lighthouse and they said like, I'm dying. So you have to come and meet me before I die, you know? And then we sent her. And then after, you know, a few months, then she called us and she said, like, I'm not coming back to, you know, hostel. And then I saw her there in the brothel. And then, and she said, like, can I, can I come, you know, with you? Like, I was like, no, I'm so sorry. I was so afraid. And then those brothel owners, they start looking at me, you know. And then, like, uh, my uncle was there and he called me. Like, he said, like, just run, you know, from that place because they, they already found it, you know, I was there. So, and then we went to hotel and then again, we discussed and then, and then, you know, like uh, we stayed in India, like more than like 15, 15 days. And then, uh, so we make uh, all the plans and then, and I, we call my mom and then, uh, you know, like uh, another uncle of our, you know, like his name is Bijay Lama and he came to, you know, also, and then we talked to police in India, Indian police. And then uh, because uh, there is a mirad and where small girls live there, uh, it's, the place name is mirad. And there's a only under girls live there in that brothel, you know? So, and then uh, when I was walking, when I was walking in that street, I heard that screaming from like the girls were screaming. And uh, it's a very, uh, the, my spirit was so down because of that, you know, the, 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 I think because of the pain the girls are suffering and the like uh, dust and that all the like, uh, you know, that is kind of like mentally stress. So even though if you you were not, in, you know, going inside of like brothels, but like walking on a street is also so much stressful. And uh, it's just meaning like, you know, that mentally also stressful because I was like thinking of my sister, you know, I was thinking of like other sister, other, other of my friends also, because they were already there. And then also then after that, you know, uh, with police, we were able to go inside of brothels, you know, in the media. And then, you know, it, we, we, had, we had a huge fight, you know, we, we had a huge fight. And um, one of uh, my uncle, he broke his hand because, because we were like, you know, like they were not allowing us to go inside. And then like, they were like, Pull, you know, pull, pulling me with, with them. And then uncle was pulling, you know, because it was kind of huge fight we had. Uh, and, and then after that, we, so I, I saw my, my friend was there, there, you know, and I just, you know, I said like, I want to see her. 
and then she came because she was already you know 20 years old and they allow her to come and but like they already washed her brain also you know before we enter that uh, you know brothels and then she told me that my sister was not there because they got some clue and then that's why they uh, you know uh, moved my sister in, into another another brothel and only my sisters, you know, uh, the kids were there, you know, and then the, there was a fight. And then I saw the boy was little, like uh, he was very, like he was sitting on a corner, like with the uh, lots of beer bottles and he was playing. And uh, and then I saw, and I, she said, he, you know, he's your, your sister's son. And then I just grab her and then they, would, they didn't allow me to grab her, but like, you know, the police, they help us. And then I found that there is a, like a four girls, you know, the four, three girls also there. And then I saw, and there was little girls, like a very beautiful face, but like lots of dust. And, uh, and then they were like just playing. And so that time we were able to rescue my, my sisters, you know, uh, like four kids that time. And then, we rescued them and then, but it was like kind of painful moment to see them, you know, and then I I cried, you know, so much and I begged them, you know, that brothel owners was like my, you know, like sister, like my cousin sister. And because see, I knew her very long time. And uh, so, and I grew up like seeing her, you know, villages and she used to like, you know, touch my body when I, when she came to visit, visit to our village and she used to say like, oh, Hannah, you're gonna like, you are so beautiful. Oh, you're gonna like, you can be like a like a you know move like a heroine you know like in a movie star um like she used to give me like some indian bollywood actor's name like you you're gonna be like her and uh, look at your body it's so perfect and uh, so many men they're gonna desire for you like kind of you know and i saw her when i saw her that i found and i wanted to so, I mean, I don't know how many people are you Christian, but I'm Christian, you know. So that time I forget about Bible. I, I forget about everything. I just feel like I want to kill her, you know. I, I feel like a, she's the one that, you know, sell, sell my sister. So by like, you know, it was impossible for sure. So, and then we rescued and then, you know, uh, then it was very painful moment that we, we couldn't find my sister. So we back to Nepal with with you know my sister uh, you know children and we back to uh, back to Nepal and with them and uh, and I asked them like do you know your mom where it is and some the girls were not even they don't know where her their mom is you know and they don't even recognize her also you know so because they separate my sister with them when they were like one month old when they were like a two month old you know and the boy they he don't know he don't even know that her mom is exist they separate her with his, her son when he was you know like when he born and they don't even allow her to feed you know you know like breastfeeding because my sister was forcing to breastfeeding to his son and they cut her breast like you you, you know if you visit someday in nepal you're gonna see that she have like a, so many scar on her breast. She, they cut her breast and put like some chili powder on it. And she put some, you know that, um, I don't know what you call like uh, in English, uh, you know that uh, there is a, some liquid that can burn you. I don't know the, exactly that word it is. Um, yeah, I forget that word. We call uh, maybe Acido? sister and so, yes, Acido? yes. That's it. Acid, yes, they, they put some acid on it. So, and that's what's so painful for her. That's why she, she stopped feeding, like, you know, give a bre breastfeeding to her, her son. And that's the re reason that the boy, he, he didn't know her mom is, you know, she is there somewhere. So, and then, and then I said like, okay, you can call me your mom, you know, I'm your mom. And they started calling me mom, you know, and then, then after two years later, that uh, again we found that our sister is 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 there, you know, in the GV road in a, is a sixty number, like a six jaro. So she was in a number of, you know, the sixty number of room. There was a, like a mini room, and she was there. And then again, like uh, we went there, my, my mom 
And then also my sister was like, you know, she was not under AIDS. And then um, also, you know, one of our, our uncles were there and then we were able to rescue her also. And you can believe now I live in, in this hostel. It's a it's a it's our own hostel. So in this hostel, I was like, you know, very young and we rescued our sister, you rescued our sister, and she came here. And our, my sister's children was here. And like, so she arrived here very like late night, and they were like all the four kids were sleeping. And uh, I told them, like, look, till now I was your mom, but she's your real mom like nor me i'm your aunt so they she's your mom and uh, and like you have no idea that that night those four kids they didn't sleep they were like just kissing her and like you know they were like just they were just try to you know touch her face and uh, they were playing with her hair i mean um it was kind of like maybe uh, the boy, like the young girls, she her name was Kiran, and she knew that like she can recognize her mom. You know, she was little younger. And then, uh, so when I saw that pain, that the you know, like uh, uh, how much pain that she you she she have on her heart, like you know, and uh, how much she have been suffer. Her scars was very new, you know, and lots of scars where she was having, and like, lots of cuts on her body, you know. And we found that when they found the brothel owners that were coming there to rescue her, and they they tried to uh, bring do bring was for her, but they was not, she was not ready. And then they beat her so badly, you know. And then I, we found that they don't even give her like a uh, almost like twenty days anything. Like they just only gave her like a you know that water that they can survive she can survive and but even though she was hungry even though she was like uh, sick because she was not eating you know and the but they were treating her like they were saying that we're gonna kill you if you go if you tell your sister you are here you know and if you tell that you're you're going back to village and then even we're gonna find you and kill you you know so they were like threatening her they were also threatening that you we're gonna kill your sister we're gonna kill your your children or you're gonna kill your parents also kind of you know so and but she was forcing us to, her, her to work like more you know it was when we rescue her it was a like a, a ramadan it's a muslim muslim festival it's called ramadan in in india maybe some of friends that i saw from india maybe they know about it and uh, so it was a ramadan more you know that uh, going on in that time and then uh, that we found that in a ramadan time like there are like a more customer you know and uh, so what happened, like uh, they wanted to like make my sister busy and they said like a more customer that that she can't even, you know, uh, come out from her that small room that uh, nobody can see her, you know. So, but like uh, uh, finally, you know, the grace of God and like finally we were able to rescue. It was painful moment, but still I'm happy that we're able to rescue. But when, when we were rescuing my sister that, you know, I saw my friends, my own friends that I will with I grew up you know I saw them I saw them like their tears you know like um when I was like coming out from brothel and one of my friends you hold my hand and like she said like you're so blessed you're so lucky you know you are not here and uh, you're so changed look at you you know you're so beautiful and you are like a doing this this you know i'm so proud of you hana like you know no my name is devi sarabadi you know my real name is so when i was nine years old and uh, it's a devi means it's a uh Big god idea. of universe you know it's a it's a like a very typical hindu god name that's why my uncle he changed my name you know so and but my still my friends they call me you know they be so they say like uh, you are so lucky that you were never been here you know but like if you if you think someday that uh, you know or if you feel that we you can even rescue us from here so mm -hmm. we'll be so happy we'll be very happy for 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 freedom freedom that you're living you know so that was kind of um you know, heartbreaking moments, but I still were praying for her. We still, like, she's still there. And I, I found that she have a, like a two children also there. So, 
Yeah, this is the. Hey, story. Hannah, can I say one thing real quick? Yeah, sure. So sorry to interrupt. I want to make sure for those that don't know our book yet. So, Sarah, you mentioned this briefly, but in this book, it's Hannah and two of her big sisters, like biological sisters, and then two women that are her friend sisters, you know, sisters for life friends. And of our five storytellers, Hannah is the only one that was not trafficked out of Nepal into India. She was never um, made to be a prostitute, never sexually exploited in the village brothels. She had a lot, she has had a lot of exploitation and injustice and uh, she's been treated very badly um, in her life. So she's been through a lot, but she is the only one of our five that has um, never had the terror of of, of being trafficked as our other four were. And she is the one, Hannah is the one that when we decided to write this book, she's mentioned a few times, she's a very spiritual, faithful, deep, deep soul of a sister. And she prayed and thought of, she literally knows hundreds, hundreds of, of young women who have been trafficked. And so her question to herself was, who shall we gather for this story? We knew it was going to be Hannah and a few others. And so she um, became very clear that she wanted to invite two of her, her older biological sisters and then these other two and, and invite them to say, you know things that I don't from your experience. You know from having been trafficked into the brothels you can shine a light on the story in a way I can't, but, but Hannah was kind of our critical um, bridge. Our, we call her our lead storyteller for this book because she was the one that, that really envisioned how the, the, which of the stories of the many hundreds that she wanted, that she thought would create the, a very true and Nepali satya, satya is, the, is, is what you say for true. She was like, I want this to be a hundred percent satya, a hundred percent true story. And so that is why she gathered these four specifically because they all were trafficked in different ways. They all um, were, were trafficked for different lengths of time, anywhere from one year to 13 years. Uh, the story all, the sister, Mina, who you were just talking about her rescue. Yes. Trafficked for 13 years. She estimated yes. that she had sex with 60,000 men. Yeah. Time, which was just devastating to read. It was, Hannah, the way you told that story was incredible. Thank you for- Yeah, Hannah. It was like so real and I felt actually quite tense and then devastated and then joyful um, watching that. Sarah, I would love to hear a little bit more about like this story of like gathering these storytellers and yeah. it all came about and also um, why? You, you know, decided that this was the story that you were going to write. But before we do that, I actually think Hannah has to run to the airport. Yeah, and you read my mind. Very soon. So Hannah, before you go, would you just mind reading that, that quote from the book um, before you have to jump off the call um, that we sent earlier? It's Hannah's own quote, but I just want to- <laughs> She's her. reading her own words. Her own words. I just <laughs> my spirit in her words, not mine. And you're muted, Hannah. Sorry. <laughs> So um, can you just say it again? Like I, I, I mean, my mind just, you know, like a switch. And uh, now every time when I share like a story about my sister, about us, it's just my, I don't know, it's something happened to me and I forget all the things. So um, Hannah, I just sent it to you. So, so go down to the very bottom of the text I sent you and you can read it. It's what Sarah... Oh. The one that it's about a warrior cry. Oh, uh, okay, sorry. Oh, <laughs> so no. the, we must do what we want, or like, yeah, that one. one. Go ahead. Yep. So you want me to read, right? Please, yes. yes. Okay, sure. <laughs> so we must do what we together, uh, together to change what is broken, to share hope and to fight for freedom, 
for those who are suffering. I will not stop sharing and shouting this message to my people and to the world. It is the, my destiny. It is my calling. It is my wor wor warrior cry. cry. Thank you so much. Your work that you're doing is incredible. And we're going to keep talking about it and sharing it with people. But I know that you have to go to the airport um, in like one minute. Thank you. You took us on a, an incredible journey with you tonight and really, really so grateful. I know it's painful to go back there, but um, thank you. Sarah, what- Thank you, Hannah. What got See, you to write yeah, this? Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Yes. Yeah, so how this happen? I would, I would love to share that. And Hannah, listen, as you need to, please feel free for you to, we don't want you to miss your flights. So please go whenever you must. Okay. And thank you for sharing your story. So I want to speak to something that Hannah, uh, that kind of takes us back to the beginning of, of the book. So Hannah mentioned being here at my house. So she was here in, Col I live in Colorado. And she was here with five uh, friends and uh, people that she um, works with now from Nepal. They were featured in a film that a good friend of mine um, put together that is amazing that Amanda has or will be including here in our, um, in our chat. But it's called No... It's called Untouchable Children of God. And um, it's a beautiful, powerful film about Hannah's people, about the body of Nepal. And my friend, the director, his name is Grant Nisley. He said, Sarah, could you host uh, our film crew and these six folks from Nepal as we're on our Denver film stop, they were on a global film tour. And um, I talked to my family and we said, absolutely, let's do it. I love to gather people. I love to um, have community events and ways to be able to share stories like this. And so we planned a week long. It was just an extravaganza of gatherings in our home. We went to universities around the city. We went to churches. We went to community events. We were on the road and gathering like for seven days straight and cooking a lot here in our house. So over all these road trips and community gatherings and cooking, we um, began very quickly to have this profound sense of connection with one another. Um, Hannah and the, her two dear, dear friends, not biological sisters, but sister sisters, just became so special to me and we had so many cups of chai and had so many times to talk and pray together about what was broken and what their dreams were in their lives and in their community and one day uh, towards the tail end of their trip as we were going to a, a university for them to speak um there was bollywood blasting in the car and we're literally in the car and one of hannah's friends said, can you stop the music for a second? I have something to say. So he stopped the music and the dancing stilled. And he said, Sarah, we've been talking about it and we think you are the one to write our story. Will you consider writing our story? He said, we've been praying for five years and, and kind of scouring the globe for the person that is supposed to write the story that we feel we want to ask to write the story. And we think you're the one. And I was just like stunned, curious, um, thinking all kinds of reasons why there would be surely someone better than me to write this story. Um, but I put all that aside and said, yes, I will. Let me think about it. Talk with my family, pray about it and uh, talk with Hannah some more. And we had a lot of conversations in that time and I had to navigate those questions. I don't know if any of you have felt that of kind of an opportunity an invitation, a possibility and kind of thinking um, like wrestling with my own wonders, thinking there's gotta be someone, maybe a person with their doctorate in 
in Nepal cultural studies, or perhaps a woman from Nepal would be better to write this story and, and kind of went through all these objections I had talked about them with Hannah. And one by one really felt like the path was made clear for me, even though I didn't totally understand it, that Hannah and I had a connection that was so strong. And, and we kind of had this picture of this book itself being a picture of a global sisterhood because it was being crafted literally from two sides of the globe. And, and, um, and I really decided I, at that point, it was an honor and that I would say yes. And that was seven years ago. So the other thing I always love mentioning about this part of our story is for anyone who feels like it's been a really long time, like a long time coming for a dream or a project or a vision or a hope to happen or to come true or to get movement or to don't give up. <laughs> That's my thing. If it's meant to be, just keep taking the steps and keep doing what you can. And then for Hannah and I, there were times where this, the steps to take was actually to pause and to, to wait until the timing became right to continue again, which actually was harder <laughs> than taking all the feeling like we were moving. So it's been a seven year incredible journey that I would not trade. It's been one of the highlights of my life. And we're, we're now just beginning being able to share it with the world, even though we've been crafting it together for seven years. We feel really, really proud to be at least one of the world's debuts of this book and talk, you guys talking about it. I'm really thankful that you guys are here. We have about 10 minutes left and I want to make sure, we have a minute to, um, Hannah, can you tell us what you're working on now and what you want people to know? Um, and you too, Sarah, like what you want people to know and what you want people to do with this information you've shared. So can I share? Or like this is how I want to share. No, go Hannah. And then and then if you need to go after this, don't do do not miss your flight for us. Okay. So go. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, you know, like you already, uh, you know, like uh, I already mentioned that, you know, about our people and about our sisters also and why they sell themselves, you know. So, you know, I after uh, seeing like uh, my sisters, especially like uh, women in the villages, you know, suffering a lot from these kind of problems. And because, uh, because you know, they, they are obviously they are not educated and they can't do any kind of job. And also like a man, they are like a jobless also. And uh, so I found that, you know, so I tried first pilot program with my mom. I do like, a, I give her a little bit, like, little, like some chicken and see you know, did a very great job with that, you know, so, and then I feel like, I think it's, it's a great, you know, that um, if we give them like some opportunity, some like, uh, you know, um, some like opportunity that they can work and they don't have to sell, sell themselves, you know, and so then after that, like, you know, we decided to, you know, work. And then after that, like, you know, I, I connected with, uh, with a team that uh, it's uh, from the US, it's called Venture Expedition. And then uh, partnering with them, like we open like a company, it's called Himalayan Entrepreneur Resources. And in Sarkar, we call her. And so we work especially with women's, uh, especially with body community. And so, and then after that, you know, because uh, uh, all the body, body women are trafficked to India and when they rescued and then when they are back to villages and, uh, and they are still, you know, uh, doing like prostitution in the in 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 villages because they have like no other option. Like if we, if they go to like other places to work and they always, you know, the people, they always behave very badly because they, they always, give them some, uh, you know, like a bad word, they use some bad word because they are like, and they, they, they're they abused. And then after that, we decided to, you know, do some, uh, give them like some vocational training, like coloring, you know, like uh, uh, making like some, like, you know, that uh, coffee, you know, and also like, alcohol, uh, you know, that um, 
so different kind of programs like uh, agriculture also we we included agriculture also and because that if they if women they they started working if they started feeding their own children and they don't have to sell their daughters you know they don't have to you know sell themselves also so because of that you know we we started working and also you know like uh, we're very considered about like their health because they are like suffering, they are suffering from so many disease because like a sexual disease and like on other different disease also because and our, our people, they, they, you know, they can't, they, they can't go hospital like they don't know some of the villages, they don't even know the how hospital looks alike, you know, and like some of the hospitals. They can't even, you know, give like good treatment to our people like, you know, you can read in my story that uh, that even doctor when the, he found that I was by the girls, I was very little girl, I was faint out because I had a like, um, uh, what's it called, uh, um, like sickness, I had a like uh, anxiety and I was sick and, and then my, my pa father, he brought me into hospital and then, and then when the doctor he found, so I was doing like, uh, the doctor was doing like video x-ray of my whole body and then he found that I was a, I was a body girl and uh, so he started, you know, like, uh, he said, like, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, like you, uh, before, you know, I start doing like a video x-ray, you know, I, I want to play with, you know, like a little bit. And then, so he started touching my body, like he started, you know, like um, playing with my private area that, you know, like you can see that even though small girls are not safe, in, even though in a hospital, the hospital is the, like a safest place, you know, we can't even imagine like a doctor can do this. They are educated, they know everything, but even though that in uh, these things happen here and with me, and so I can't, I can't even like think that how much that our other sister can suffer because because of that they never share their problem with the doctor because in the public like, we have we don't have like the you know that um many like uh, you know that women's doctors that who can check the women's problems like we have like more like uh, man doctors so and then they are they're suffering from like uh, you know that uh, infection those things and sex, sexual you know um uh, diseases so and then her company we decided to work with with that also to solve their problems and bring doctor into villages and we we call that health and hygiene so we work for health and hygiene also we distribute free sanitary pad you know, like uh, different villages also because they still don't know how to use sanitary pads also, you know, and they don't use till now, but now we were, we started, you know, like distribute free sanitary pad into the villages and give them, you know, health and hygiene training and like make them, you know, stand on their own food and then work and then change our community. Because, you know, we, in Nepal, we have one calling is if mom is educated and the whole house can be educated, you know, if you know, house is educated and the mom is educated, then the community can be educated, you know. So because of that, you know, we started focusing on mom because uh, I think we feel like uh, the moms are the like main, you know, the uh, role model in the house, in the body community. They're not a man. So all the work, um, the, all the women's they work, all the women's they, women's are the one that who cooked, women's are the one who sell themselves the everything is like oh, everywhere the women's are involved and the, like there's a there's a no man involvement for anything so man's work is just only playing in the like card and they drink and they just beat their wife and that's sorry. it like not an on the sorry i don't want to interrupt you but we are running out of time and i want to make sure that we just have a chance to sure. close out and finish up but um to just to summarize i think you're saying that himalayan entrepreneur resources your organization is working on vocational yes. training and yes. health and hygiene with a focus on women who are both survivors yes. and then prevention for the next generation. I want to thank you for the amazing work you're doing. We are sure. wanting to learn more and support you and come alongside you and partner with you. I think you've got us all fired up to figure that out. Um, Sarah, I want to, we've just got a few more minutes. Could you tell us like what you want people to do with the information you, you and Hannah have shared in this book? Yeah, a couple things from Hannah's story. So for those that have read or will read, you'll know that Hannah's, one of her many 
dreams, but probably her biggest is to be prime minister of Nepal. And just yesterday in Nepal, Nepal time, she met with the prime minister and and um, for we're, we just drafted yesterday a letter to the president of Nepal, who is a woman, for those that don't know. And in Nepal, uh, they drafted as part of their constitution, there has to be either a woman vice president or a president. It, one or the other has to be a woman. And so she is. So we are inviting her to come to our book launch in Nepal, which is March 4th. So one thing you guys can do is for those that are spiritually minded, pray, send blessings for the doors to fly open for, because, because Hannah, her dream and our dream is that from the top down in Nepal, from the you know, president, the, the prime minister to all of the citizens, private citizens, that these stories would, would inspire and would awaken people so to really tangibly care deeply for what is happening among the body and to do things. There's a lot that needs to happen, a lot of change that needs to happen. But for all of us private citizens that can't do anything about politics in Nepal yet, except pray, a um, couple things that we would love to invite you to do. I already saw Amanda put, we created a human trafficking toolkit that we didn't want to share this story and have this I feel like this huge, horrifying reality of human trafficking fall into our hearts and into our laps without a sense of what can I do about this? So we created this toolkit that Amanda um, popped in the, the chat um, and it has films, it has books, it has organizations, including her future coalition, which everyone here knows about, I think, even my people. Um, but with the invitation to kind of feel like you're going on a treasure hunt as you go through it of who is capturing my attention? What might I be able to do? One step in my daily, everyday life. We um, have so many very specific things from little teeny steps to big leaps in there. So check that out. Um, we would love for anyone that's in a book club or part of a community group, um, I would love to, to Zoom with you guys as often as possible. Hannah will join and, and in person whenever we can, just to be able to have a sense of personal connection um, with, with y'all. So if you have anything like that, we would love and be honored to be a part. Um, another thing is we would really love for for y'all to, to share this book, to share how it's impacting you, to read it in a way, first of all, just for yourself to look for connections of with the stories you're reading, with uh, in the divine mystery of things, you know, maybe what's being stirred in your own story and, and how you might be in be invited to, to do something anew. So as you learn that, share it with a friend and share this book. We would love that because we believe community and sharing our stories with each other is really how change happens. Um, and right now we are doing a fundraiser for Hannah's organization, Her Future, Her Future, Himalayan Entrepreneur Resources, Her. Um, so anyone that would like to donate to that, it's all of the money is going to Hannah's work and um, to really support and champion these women. And I want to say two of the women in her team of nine that are leading Himalayan Entrepreneur Resources are her two sisters that were rescued, that escaped, and they are now leading Hannah's company with her around the whole nation of Nepal. So I think that is just extraordinary and so important. So there's a few things. And you can also, you guys, if you wanna make a donation and you're just used to donating to her future coalition, you can obviously donate 100% will be forwarded to Hannah's work and just put a note with the donation that it's for Hannah or H-E-R, um, Himalayan Entrepreneur yes. Resources. We are gonna get behind this as well, Hannah and Sarah. This is beautiful work that you guys are doing and is life-changing work. And Sarah, I love how you ask in the book, just you ask the reader, just what changes might this story make in my life? You ask people to ask themselves that. And yeah. many of y'all know my own journey started with, you know, it was a film, not a book, but 
this can change your life and can set you out on a journey that will be as incredibly life-changing as, you know, as Hannah's and Sarah's. You guys, thank you so much for sharing this with us tonight, for being here with us, for sharing your hearts so openly. And so, I don't know, personally, um, it was, it was incredible. I'm so, so thankful. Thanks everyone for attending and listening. I know it's not easy, um, but what a beautiful place to start. And just thank you all so much. And we will definitely have these guys back and, and learn more uh, as we go forward. You guys, thank you. This has been an honor. So much love to all of y'all. Thank you so much Yay. for listening. Thank you. India, good night, United States. <laughs>